Welcome to Hewish Park here in Yeovil for this afternoon's very attractive looking clash at the top of the conference, Yeovil Town against the Diamonds. Now the similarities between this afternoon's hosts, Yeovil and Rosden and Diamonds, who we know all about of course, is striking. If you think the Diamonds have got good facilities and a good team challenging at the top of the conference, just check out this place. Yeovil are one of the non-league's biggest names with one of the best pedigrees and they've got a stadium to match up to their reputation. There's about two and a half thousand inside Hewish Park for this afternoon's match. A real six-pointer. Yeovil are currently fourth. The Diamonds five points ahead of them in second place. This afternoon's game has such a bearing on the top of the conference. A good following have followed Rushden down from North Ants. They've made the long way down here to Somerset. But this is Yeovil, the Glovers running out in front of their home crowd. The Diamonds have been toppled recently from the lofty summit of the conference. They've drawn their last two matches against Nuneaton and Dover. Yeovil also are experiencing a rough time of things recently. Their last six matches in the conference have produced just one win and three defeats. Most recently, last Saturday, up at Hensford, a game that people down here in these parts are telling me that they shouldn't have lost. Well, whether the defeat was justified or not, new player coach here at Yeovil, Steve Thompson, makes three changes from the side that went down at Keys Park. Terry Skiverton, a summer signing from Welling United, comes in in the centre of defence to replace Chris Sparks. Up front, Ben Smith replaces Jason Eaton and Paul Tisdale replaces Tony Pounder on the left wing. Warren Patmore, Yeovil's top scorer, wears nine this afternoon. No place, though, in the starting lineup for ex-Diamond, Adrian Foster, who came down here to Hewish Park during the summer months. Well, the Diamond side there, just the one change from the side that drew with Dover last Saturday at Nen Park. Tim Wooding drops out. Jim Rodwell replaces him in the centre of defence alongside Mark Peters and Ray Warburton. Of course, two draws in their last two games have meant that the Diamonds have slipped out of the frame slightly. Yeovil are up there as well. Nuneaton also challenging. Well, that's Yeovil and Jamie Pittman on the far side forcing a corner after only 40 seconds of this match. Jim Rodwell was the player who got his foot in. Pittman will take the corner, right-footed. And Skiverton! Oh, and Yeovil have scored within the first minute. The Diamonds just do not know how to defend corners. How many times have we seen it this season? Well, this takes me back to Hereford when they scored in the first minute thanks to a uh, corner over on the left flank and the Diamonds fans surely thinking, when are we going to be able to defend set pieces adequately? Straightforward corner, Collins had lost his man and Terry Skiverton, who has come in today to replace Chris Sparks in the middle of defence, has given Yeovil a first minute lead at Hewish Park. Well, that's Collins, who might well have been responsible for that first. Warburton has made his way up to McElhatton, blocked by Brown. Peters back out to Brady. All in by Brady. Oh, over Peters, and it's in. Rodwell might have got the final touch, but the linesman on the far side is not happy with what happened inside the box there. I must admit, I didn't see anything too wrong with that initially. The referee's gone across to have a few words, and by the looks of things, Ruthen and Diamonds are going to be denied an equaliser. Well, maybe we can get a better idea of what happened here. Brady's ball in caused a bit of confusion with D'Souza. The ball ricocheted into the path of Rodwell. Well, would have been an own goal anyway, but maybe the referee has spotted a foul, maybe, by Peters or D'Souza in the middle. Well... It would have been an own goal by Stowell, but the Diamonds still trail. Pittman will take it. Patmore's touch on. Oh, possible chance there for Hayfield. Turley did just enough to put him off. Very close indeed there to goal number two for Yeovil. Pittman's free kick. Nodded on by Warren Patmore here again. No challenge on Patmore. And for a moment, Hayfield had got goal side of Butterworth. Turley saves the Diamonds there. Now Skiverton, the goal scorer. Far post ball where Patmore waits and Rodwell on the deck. It's winded. But it's going to be a Yeovil corner as Patmore picks himself up as well on the far post. Pittman takes. Skiverton again! And for the second time in this match, Terry Skiverton allowed a free header inside the box. And that's 2-0 to Yeovil Town, and when will the Diamonds learn? Two minutes before half-time, 
and a difficult task for Ruthen and Diamonds has been turned into a mammoth one now. A carbon copy of the first goal. Pittman swung over the corner. Skiverton beat two or three Diamonds in the air. An easy header, and that's 2-0. This is Mackle Hatton. And he should have slipped the ball out wide to Underwood there when he had the chance, but nevertheless, it's a free kick. The challenge by Terry Skiverton on Mackle Hatton. Rushton free kick from some 30 yards distance. Brady, John Hampshire. And chance for Underwood. And the Diamonds have a lifeline just a few moments before half time. Paul Underwood pulls it back to 2 1, and suddenly the task doesn't look so difficult now. Sloppy goal from Yeovil's point of view. Hampshire's ball in. Underwood skip past Piper. Good finish. That's his third of the season. He scored against Dover last week. And it's given Ruthven and Diamonds such a boost before half time. Over on the far side is Peters and Stowell. And well, that is the halfway mark at Hewish Park this afternoon. A game that is living up to expectations. Indeed, Skiverton and Brown at the back have been absolutely watertight for Yeovil. That was Skiverton, whose two goals are the difference at the moment. Ben Smith. And that's awkward, and Pittman was stealing in, and a third for Yeovil. Matt Hayfield, once again, the Diamonds in tatters, and Yeovil Town heading for a famous victory at Hewish Park today. The fans have gone mad, and with six minutes gone in this second half, their two-goal advantage over Richmond and Diamonds is restored. Pat Moore involved, Ben Smith's cross was dropping so awkwardly for Turley and Peters and when the ball bobbled across the face, Peters and Turley and Brady were just spectators as Matt Hayfield makes it 3-1 for Yeovil. Brady's with it. More than you would expect have moved their way forward for the Diamonds here. Gary Mills, Souza, Mills again. And Yeovil are able to break here. The ball out by Pittman. Hayfield and Cousins. And Hayfield in the middle. He's clean through and Turley was out. And this could be a dismissal. It's not a goal that's rolled just wide. Billy Turley might well be seeing red for this. And the Diamonds afternoon is in danger of collapsing around their ears here. Billy Turley, well, you expect that sort of gesture. It wasn't my fault. That's what I think he's saying there. But Hayfield clean through and wasn't given the opportunity to go around the goalkeeper there because Turley has just gone straight through him. And he's walking away from the referee who has been very lenient there in my opinion. Billy Turley stays on the field and Yeovil will have to make do with a free kick which Hayfield fires straight at the goalkeeper who shouldn't even be on the pitch. Ball into the box, we'll look for D'Souza on the far side and the Diamonds, you get the impression, are running out of ideas slightly. When it comes to that final third of the field, they do have a corner with Brady here, though. Peters was up, and McElhattan, and that's saved by Pennock. And that's pretty much the first time he's been called into action to make a save this afternoon, Tony Pennock. His only other activity was to pick the ball out of the net from Paul Underwood's goal, but that's a point-blank stop there by Pennock. Probably didn't know a lot about it. McElhattan shot straight at him. The over free kick. Susan not happy with the decision. It's Cousins standing over it. Looking for Ben Smith over his head. Pittman. That's Tisdale. Pittman again. Tisdale. That was Ben Smith's ball which tried to let Matt Hayfield in. Skiverton beats D'Souza in the air and that's been one of the most telling battles this afternoon. Yeovil have not allowed the Diamonds any change at all. Smith to Patmore. And Patmore's cross is going in. Turley saves, but this will be number four. And it's Hayfield again. And the Diamonds are falling apart at Hewish Park. Halfway through the second half, it's Yeovil Town four, Rathen and Diamonds one. And it's turning into a famous afternoon for supporters of Yeovil Town everywhere. They can't believe their eyes. The ease with which they're carving through this Diamonds defence. Once again, a right wing cross caused the problems. Patmore 
Bit of luck, really. It was going in. Turley tipped it onto the bar. And as with Yeovil's third this afternoon, the Diamonds just simply stood around and watched Hayfield add to the tally. Well, Diamonds fans, long way down here to Somerset. Are they thinking, I'd rather just have stayed in and watched England-Scotland? Probably. This is Pennock. Space for Ben Smith, left-footed shot, 5-1. And it just gets worse for the Diamonds. It gets more heavenly for Yeovil. And they are now scoring at will. With 22 minutes still left in this match, they go four goals clear of the Diamonds, and it's five goals to one. Route one goal, if ever you've seen one, the goalkeeper's kick, nodded on by Patmore, and an unerring left-footed drive by Ben Smith which gives Yeovil a fifth. McElhatton, straight at Pennock. And it's turning into a catastrophic afternoon for Brian Talbot's Diamonds. 4-0, they lost at Hereford, which was their biggest defeat in the conference for some three years. But the record books are going to need to be amended after this match, I can tell you. The last time the Diamonds conceded five in a conference match, well, it was actually just over two years ago in the five-all draw with Farnborough, but the last time they lost, as McElhatton lets frustration creep into his play there with the other team scoring five, August 1996. It's been a torrid afternoon for the ex-Cobblers keeper. It's fair to say he could do very little about any of the goals. Indeed, his defence left him extremely exposed on more than one occasion. And now they've got to get back here to defend Ben Smith with Butterworth. Peters will force the ball out. That was Cousins. Patmore, he's deserved a goal, no doubt about that, Warren Patmore. Back to Ben Smith, deflection. Charles possibly for Cousins. Well, that's been one occasion this afternoon when Yeovil have been wide and inaccurate. It hasn't happened too many times. Smith drove the ball in, it came off Kenny Crammon, and Cousins just couldn't get over it. Still the Diamonds look for a consolation. John Brady. He'll get a second chance to ping the ball in. Still congested in the box. Mark Peters with a header, and Pennant has to save. So at least the Diamonds are giving something to warm their fans up as we approach the final whistle. It's come far too late to change anything but that was Pennock diving across his goal to save from Peters Mills to Brady everyone back for Yeovil Brady's ball finds Myson no power on the header but it's going to be a serious rethinking exercise for Brian Talbot and Risbon and Diamonds they've been caned here at Hewish Park this afternoon by five goals to one run ragged and ripped apart by rampant Yeovil Town this afternoon who themselves have seriously enhanced their credentials as title challengers this season. Brian Talbot and the Diamonds will return to North Ants on the end of a 5-1 hammering. Terry Skiverton scored twice in the first half for Yeovil. Paul Underwood briefly uh, gave Diamonds fans hope that something might be salvaged with a goal just before half time but in the second half Yeovil simply carried on where they left off. Two further goals for Matt Hayfield. And then a final one, a beauty by Ben Smith, has completed the route. The Diamonds' worst defeat for some three years and three months. They dropped to third in the conference. Yeovil up to fourth. They're emphatic winners this afternoon. Final score, 5-1. Yeah, Brian, 5-1 defeat. Uh, obviously very disappointing and nothing really went right for us all afternoon. No, I mean, we had a disastrous start in the first minute. They got a score from a corner. And we've never recovered. I mean, although um, at half time we got a lifeline, it was 2 1, Underwood scored, and you think we got a chance. Uh, but second half, it was nice through a batter for three goals, and they could have got a couple more, really. And we never really looked like scoring uh, at the other end. It was a poor performance, and everyone to a man was, was not good enough. Defensively, very poor. Which yeah, defensively. Quite unusual from recent weeks. Yeah, definitely. And you wonder, you wonder why, if there's an explanation, I don't think there is. It's blipped again, you think Hereford's a one-off, but it's happened again, and it makes you wonder. Obviously, they don't become bad players overnight. Um, we've gone 11 games and lost once. Uh, we've got a heavy defeat today, Moran. It's not just a beating, it's a hammering. Uh, humiliating, really, for us. 
Um, and it'll be, be interesting to see how players react to this.